What's up, y'all? I won't win. Checking in. And today we're going to look into the career of one of the most versatile NFL players of the past two decades. NFL Untold Stories, Mike Furry. Mike Furry was born May 12, 1997 in Galleon, Ohio. He would grow up in Hilliard, Ohio, a city just outside of Columbus. Furry would attend Hilliard Davidson High School, where he played basketball, football, and baseball. As a senior football player, Furry was named First Team All District, First Team All Conference, and First Team All State at the wide receiver and free safety position. He was also named the Central District Offensive Player of the Year. Coming out of high school, Furry stood 6 feet tall and weighed 170 pounds. He had no Division I scholarship offers, but had walk-on opportunities at West Virginia, Pittsburgh, and Ohio State. Growing up in Ohio and having his older brother Matt play for the Ohio State baseball team made Mike's decision easy. He decided to enroll and become a Buckeye in 1995. The odds were against Furry as he was coming in as a walk-on freshman. That 1995 Ohio State offense was led by running back Eddie George, who would win the Heisman Trophy that year, and wide receiver Terry Glenn, who would win the Fred Belitnikoff Award for best wide receiver in college football. Furry would not receive much playing time that year. But Furry did not get discouraged. He knew he was fighting an uphill battle and wanted to prove himself in practice every day. Entering his sophomore year, Furry dedicated himself to the weight room and transforming his body. He became one of the most quickest, fastest, and strongest players on the team. And he would prove himself indeed, as he was one of the most biggest surprises in the 1996 spring practices. Coaches noticed his ability to get open and his short hands whenever he was throwing the ball. That spring, Furry would earn a starting spot on the punt and kickoff return teams. During the season, Furry would expect more playing time at wide receiver, but he continued to fall in the depth chart. In 1997, Furry decided to transfer to Northern Iowa, a Division I AA school that played in the Gateway Football Conference, which is now known as the Missouri Valley Football Conference. And at wide receiver, Furry would ball out. From 1997 to 1999, he was a three-time All-American, earned first team All-Conference three times, had 242 receptions, 3,544 receiving yards, and 27 total touchdowns. Furry ranks fifth all-time for receptions in conference history and recorded 286 receiving yards in a single game, which ranks third all-time in conference history. And in 2017, Furry was inducted into the Northern Iowa Athletics Hall of Fame. After graduating from Northern Iowa, Furry pursued his dream of playing in the NFL and entered his name in the 2000 NFL Draft. But despite putting up great numbers and being a three-time All-American in college, Furry would go undrafted. The Indianapolis Colts invited him to attend training camp for a shot to make the roster, but Furry was eventually cut. In 2001, Furry earned a roster spot on the Las Vegas Outlaws, a team in the XFL. That season, Furry only recorded 18 receptions, 243 receiving yards, and one touchdown. Despite a down season in the XFL, Furry knew if he kept working and improving, his dream of becoming an NFL player would eventually come true. In 2002, after the XFL fell apart, Furry tried out for the New York Dragons, a team in the Arena Football League. He impressed coaches and earned a spot on the roster as a wide receiver and defensive back. And at wide receiver that year, Furry would ball out. He led the league in receiving with 108 receptions, 1,574 yards, and 46 touchdowns, which tied the league record for TDs at the time. After his standout season in the AFL, Furry was offered and signed a contract with the St. Louis Rams in 2003. That season, Furry played 13 games as a wide receiver and special teams leader. On offense, he was targeted 33 times, had 20 receptions, and 189 receiving yards. In 2004, Furry would only play in 8 games and had 1 catch for 8 yards for the entire season. But finding ways to get involved in the Rams offense would be a tall task for any player coming into the league. As the team featured Hall of Fame running back Marshall Falk, Hall of Fame wide receiver Isaac Bruce, and All-Pro wide receiver Torrey Holt. But in 2005, Furry would finally become a starter just not on offense at wide receiver. See, the Rams were experiencing major depth issues in the secondary. Since Furry played safety in the AFL as well as wide receiver, coaches talked to him about the possible switch to DB. And in week five, Furry would start at free safety. And for a guy who only played wide receiver and special teams the previous two seasons, Furry put together a solid year. In 11 games, he recorded 58 combined tackles, one tackle for loss, three fumble recoveries, four interceptions, and one interception for a touchdown. But despite having a solid year at free safety for the Rams, he was released by the team in the offseason. And in 2006, Furry would sign a one-year deal with the Detroit Lions where he would switch back to wide receiver and have a breakout year. 
Freddie will record 98 receptions, 1,086 receiving yards, and 6 receiving touchdowns. That season, he will finish first in the NFC for total receptions and second in the league in total receptions. Talk about versatility after being tied 7th in the league for most interceptions in the previous season with 4. On top of that, Furry set an NFL record that season for most receptions by a non-rookie in the season following the season without any receptions. After his breakout season, Furry will resign with the Lions on a $9 million three-year deal with $4 million guaranteed. In the 2000 NFL Draft, the Lions would select number one prospect, wide receiver Calvin Johnson, and we all know how great he panned out to be. Furry's production would take a hit that season but he would still put up solid numbers, recording 61 receptions, 664 receiving yards, and one touchdown. With Calvin Johnson emerging into one of the most dominant wide receivers the league has ever seen, Frey will fall back in the depth chart. He would play one more year with the Lions in 2008 and was released after the season. In 2009, 32-year-old Furry was signed with the Cleveland Browns. He would start off at wide receiver, but lo and behold, the team dealt with a lot of injuries in the secondary and Frey was moved to defensive back. On the field, Furry was known for his versatility, but off the field, he was known as a humanitarian. That season, he was the Browns' Ed Block Courage Award recipient, an award given to players on each team in the NFL voted by their teammates as role models of inspiration, sportsmanship, and courage. Furry won the 2009 JB Award, an accolade for those who specialize in community service given by CBS studio host James Brown. Furry was also one of three finalists for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, an award that recognizes a player's off-the-field community service as well as his excellence on the field. In 2010, Furry was signed with the Washington football team. But unfortunately, he would suffer a concussion before the start of the regular season. Washington placed him on IR, and Furry wouldn't play another down in the NFL. After retiring, Furry got into coaching. In 2011, he was named head coach at Kentucky Christian University, an NAIA school, where he coached until 2012. After the 2012 and 2013 season, Furry left Kentucky Christian and became the wide receivers coach at Marshall University, a position in which he stayed for three seasons. In 2016, Frey took over as the head coach at Limestone College, a Division II program, where he would coach for two seasons. In 2018, Frey was hired as the wide receivers coach for the Chicago Bears by head coach Matt Nagy, former AFL teammate and roommate of Furry. Furry's road to the NFL was unconventional. From being a walk-on at Ohio State, transferring to Northern Iowa, going undrafted, playing in the XFL and AFL, and finally making it to the league. And when he got there, he made the ultimate sacrifices for the greater good of his team. This shows us to always keep faith. And when never given the opportunity, you got to take advantage of it. Thank you all for tuning in. I won't win. Checking out. Peace.